On today's episode of You Asked, Samsung S95C versus S90C. Why can't we get the inputs and outputs that we want from our TVs? And what's going on with ATSC 3.0 tuners? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is You Asked, the show where I answer questions that you asked in hopes that I can help you and others who have similar tech questions. If you have a question that you'd like to see answered on the show, please send your email to youasked at digitaltrends.com and I'll do my best to get to it. All right, let's dig into today's show. John Accomando writes, based on my personal needs and preferences, I have zeroed in on the Samsung OLED as my personal choice, but I'm truly hung up on whether I stretch myself to the S95C or jump on an S90C now. The last thing I wanna do is spend over $2,000 and feel like I settled in any way. My TV choices have always been thought out and driven by my love for gaming and movie watching. I still have a perfectly working Pioneer Kuro Elite Plasma in my guest room that still blows me away all these years later. I have a living room currently without a TV and it'll probably need to stay that way at least another month or so if I'm gonna go after the S95C. But if I can feel convinced that the S90C will give me the same experience, I'm prepared to treat myself to that for Christmas. Do you have any insight that could help this dilemma that I'm tied up with? Okay, so John, you sent that email on Christmas day at 6 p.m. And I only call attention to that because I feel like I was there with you when you wrote that email. I don't know, I just, I get the feeling that I know what was going through your heart and mind in that moment. Could be way off, I don't know, I just, it's a, it's a vibe I get. Anyway, as your TV purchasing counselor, we're gonna look at this two ways, logically and emotionally. Now, logically speaking, I can tell you that there are three things that separate the S95C and the S90C OLED TVs. One is the One Connect box that you get with the S95C and the resulting slimmer TV design. Two is the slightly better audio system that you get with the S95C and three is the slightly higher brightness of the S95C. Now, I'll tell you right now that the brightness and the audio differences are pretty nuanced. The S95C can, in some very limited cases, come off just slightly brighter for some scenes. I would not choose the S95C if it were just down to the brightness difference. I would definitely not buy the S95C just for the audio improvement. And well, you know better than I do if the One Connect box is something you really want or need. I'll say this. You need to want two or more of those three things to really need to buy the S95C. That's the practical take. Now for the emotional take. And folks, pay attention because I think it's important to look at big purchases from this perspective. John, you like nice stuff. You got a Pioneer Kuro back when they were outrageously expensive TVs. And look how much joy it's brought to you you're still talking about how much it blows you away even today. I imagine you probably feel like that was a really worthwhile investment, right? And I think that you wanna feel the same way about this TV purchase. And you know what? I don't think me telling you to buy the S90C instead of the S95C is gonna end up being the tipping point for you. I think this question of whether you're cutting a corner of some sort, making a sacrifice, is gonna haunt you no matter what I say. Honestly, I think you're gonna end up buying the S95C. I think you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. And I think in your more rational moments, you know as well as I do that waiting another month to get what you really want is probably the right call. But hey, if I'm way off on all that psychological stuff, buy the S90C, it's a better deal. Next up, Ron writes, I bought an A80L for my mom and the tuner is really slow. I thought it was an ATSC 3.0 tuner, which made me wonder with what's been going on with ATSC 3.0, which TVs still have it? So Ron, can you email me back and tell me what you mean by the tuner is slow? Do you mean it's slow to change from one channel to the next? Like it takes a while to lock in the signal and then display the image? Or is it slow to just click up from one channel to another? Or was it slow to scan all the channels in your area? Please clarify that for me. I will say that so far, there's no real benefit I can see to ATSC 3.0, but there's no real drawback that I've noticed either. It's just a bummer that local broadcasters are using ATSC 3.0 to cram more crappy channels into the same space rather than try to offer 4K broadcasts 
and better audio. Oh, also LG TVs in 2024 will not have ATSC 3.0 tuners built in because of some licensing disagreements associated with a patent issue. Honestly, I just don't care about ATSC 3.0 yet. It seems like a mess of a rollout to me. Anyway, Ron, email me back and we'll try to take care of your issue. Jeremiah writes, hi, I'm new to 4K TVs and to the newer HDMI, ARC, and EARC inputs on devices. I got a question on using 4K TVs and AVRs. I don't plan on using the AVR all the time and only plan on using it on movie nights with the family. My devices would be a PS5, cable box, Apple TV, and a dedicated 4K player, which I'm assuming is a dedicated 4K disc player. What devices would be better hooked to the TV and which to the AVR? I have three kids watching Apple TV apps through the day and didn't want them to have to turn on the AVR all the time if it was hooked up to the AVR first, then out to the TV. Also, do you have to turn on the AVR to pass video to the TV? This seems it would be hard on the AVR over time when watching content. So, Jeremiah, it would be easier for me to answer your question if you provided your TV model number and AVR model number. That way I would know how many HDMI inputs you had, whether or not you had ARC or eARC, and on which component, and whether your receiver does video pass-through in standby mode. Because some newer receivers will pass video through while in standby mode, which to most folks just means they're basically turned off. Yours might be able to do that. I don't know. I will say it's a feature that you must enable in some receivers though. So look for that feature in the specs list for your AVR. And if it can do it, figure out how to make sure it's turned on so you can pass video through no matter what you're doing. Now, as far as your hookup goes, I say if you have four HDMI inputs on your TV, connect all of your devices to your TV and just run one HDMI cable to your receiver using the ARC connections. Not only does this save you a bunch of cabling, but it's the simplest solution for everyone. Just use the TV to switch from Apple TV to game console to cable to your 4K disc player. If you have three HDMI inputs on your TV and you can't plug them all in, then connect the dedicated 4K disc player to your receiver and everything else to your TV. That would be my advice. Here are a couple of related audio related questions. Carl writes, with soundbars not having enough HDMI inputs, why don't TV manufacturers put a dedicated HDMI output with audio pass-through on their TVs and just get rid of the digital Toslink outputs, also known as optical uh, digital outputs? I know about eARC, but with a dedicated HDMI output, the user keeps all four dedicated inputs. And then Aaron B writes, why don't any modern TVs allow for two simultaneous audio outputs? Why is there not a TV available with two eARC outputs or just an option to run the optical audio out with eARC still active? I have multiple devices with eARC available as well as a full studio of sound in my entertainment room and I would love a way to use my S990C, I think that's Q990C soundbar, and still get a signal to my soundboard. Is there an external receiver that can control eARC devices as well as manage a second audio out even simple RCA with no volume control would work. Wow, you guys sometimes get super specific and normally that's just too specific for me to get into, but I'm gonna try here. So guys, I pulled these two questions together because I wanted to try to explain why TVs don't have the IO or inputs and outputs that we wish they had. Reason one is that TV manufacturers rarely make these particular parts of the TVs themselves. And number two is, they have to play to the most common denominator and are not really in the business of spiking costs by catering to special needs. MediaTek, who you may have heard of, makes a lot of the boards that go into these TVs. This means that the system on chip, which handles a lot of the processing and transcoding for audio, is integrated with the HDMI outputs. That's not made by the TV brand in question. There are some exceptions, for instance, TCL, which is a fully vertically integrated company, makes all of their own stuff, which is why on their TVs, you'll see the eARC port is actually separate from one of the two 4K 120 Hertz or 8K 60 Hertz ports. But you'll note that TCL still only has two high bandwidth ports. Samsung and LG could probably do this, but they, like all the TV brands, are trying to serve the most amount of folks possible. 
the greatest common denominator. And lots of folks need optical digital output still. And lots of folks are just fine with three or four HDMI ports, one of them being an ARC or eARC port. The people that need more are in the minority, and they are probably spending enough on their elaborate setups that spending a little more to make it all work is gonna be okay with them. Now, to Aaron, just about any AV receiver with preamp outputs will do what you want it to do. Or you could get an HDMI to toss link or HDMI to analog converter box and skip having the expensive receiver in play for just that relatively simple task. There are some receivers though that will do HDMI audio only out to a second zone. And some receivers will transcode HDMI audio, down mix it and put it out via Toslink. I think you have a few different options at your disposal. Anyway, guys, I get it. We look at the back of our TVs and think, if only it had this thing this particular way, then I could do what I wanna do. Why don't they just do that? And then you think, surely I'm not the only one who wants it this way. And while it is true that you're not the only one, you are part of a small group of folks and big businesses just don't have your very specific interests in mind, as frustrating as that can be. And it gets me a lot more often than you might think. Thanks so much for watching another episode of You Asked. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share this show with a friend. I'll see you on the next episode from CES in Las Vegas. I'm so excited. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. You asked at digital trend.